everybody. Today's practice problem comes from Economics, Principles, and Applications by Robert Hall and Mark Lieberman, 6th edition. We're going to be working on Chapter 6, Problem Number 3. So the problem says, Anita consumes both pizza and Pepsi. The following tables show the amount of utilities she obtains from different amounts of these two goods per week, and then we're given these numbers here. And then we're given some additional information. We're told, suppose Pepsi costs $1 per can. So I'm just going to say the price of Pep equals 1. We were told that pizza costs $2 per slice. So I'll just put P sub P's for pizza is 2. And that Anita has $18 to spend on these two goods each week. So in economic terms, her income, or I, is 18. It says, what combination of pizza and Pepsi will maximize her utility? Luckily, we have a pretty simple and straightforward rule that lets us know whether or not our utility is being maximized. And that is the rule as follows. We say that utility is maximized, I'll just put utility max, where the marginal utility of the first good divided by the price of the first good is equal to the marginal utility of the second good divided by the price of the second good. Now notice here I just used x's and y's, but here of course our two goods under consideration are Pepsi and pizza. So we would say that the marginal utility of Pepsi divided by the price of Pepsi has to equal the marginal utility of pizza divided by the price of pizza. And what this means intuitively, it has a really nice intuitive explanation. And you can think about each one of these quantities being happiness per dollar or additional happiness per dollar, or in a you know, somewhat literal and somewhat figurative sense, bang for the buck, right? So what we're actually saying is that your, t your utility is maximized where you're getting the same bang for your buck from both of the goods that you're consuming. And that kind of makes sense, because if you were able to leverage your money more on one of the goods than the other to get more happiness per dollar, you should shift more to that thing and vice versa. So in order to analyze this concept against these numbers, we're going to have to go through and calculate marginal utility, which is fine. I'm going to add in a marginal utility column here and a marginal utility column here. And marginal utility is just the additional utility or the additional happiness that you get from consuming one more of something. Or mathematically, marginal utility is the change in total utility divided by the change in quantity. So here we notice that our change in quantity, just because we're going from 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 7, our change in quantity is always 1. So our marginal utility is actually just going to be the differences between these total utility numbers here. That's not always going to be the case. If we weren't incrementing by one, that would not be the case, but it happens to be here. So our job is pretty easy. I don't know how to calculate the marginal utility of this fourth unit, because I don't know how happy I was with three slices of pizza. So I don't have anything to compare it to. But I can say that my marginal utility from the fifth slice of pizza is 20, just 135 minus 115 that I got 20 extra units of happiness from the fifth slice of pizza. My marginal utility from the sixth slice of pizza was 19, and that's going to be 154 minus 135. And my marginal utility from the seventh slice of pizza is going to be 171 minus 154, which if I'm doing my math correctly is 17. So we see a pattern like this here. And this makes sense because most goods exhibit the, um, the characteristic of diminishing marginal utility, meaning that each additional unit doesn't add as much to our happiness as the one that came before did. Now, this is pretty surprising to me because by the time I'm at five slices of pizza, my marginal utility from like forcing down that fifth slice of pizza is probably negative. But nonetheless, they're still getting additional happiness 
from consuming more and more pizza, they're just getting additional happiness at a declining rate. And we can do the same thing over here. We can say that, again, we don't know what the marginal utility from this fifth Pepsi, good lord, five Pepsis, I guess this is per week, so it's less bad. I'm not consuming all these at one time. So I don't know what this marginal utility is here, but I notice again that my quantity is incrementing by one each time. So to calculate marginal utility, I can just take the differences between these numbers here. So I don't have a fourth Pepsi to compare this to, but I can see that the marginal utility of the sixth Pepsi is just 75 minus 63, which is 12. I can see that the marginal utility of the seventh Pepsi is just 86 minus 75, which is 11. And I can see the marginal utility of the eighth Pepsi is just 96 minus 86, which is 10. So again, we see diminishing marginal utility for Pepsi as well, which makes sense. So coming back to the question at hand, that of utility maximization, we have to find the point at which the marginal utility of Pepsi divided by the price of Pepsi, which we said was just one, was equal to the marginal utility of pizza divided by the price of pizza, which we said was two. So just to make this a little bit cleaner, we have to find a spot where the marginal utility of Pepsi is equal to the marginal utility of pizza divided by two. And what we'll notice here is that there's one other thing that we want to make sure we're doing. We want to find the point where this is true and the consumer is spending all of her income, right? So we can say here utility is maximized where this is true and all income is being spent. Because otherwise, we could have a point where we have these ratios the way that they should be, but we're not spending all of our money, so by definition, we'd be able to do better if we did spend all of our money. So you don't want to forget about this one here. But we can check this first, and we can see, based on our marginal utility numbers, we want a number where this is half of this. Now, I see that there's a combination here with a marginal utility of 20 for pizza and a marginal utility of 10 for Pepsi. I don't think that there are any other combinations, given the information that we have, that work. Because here, if I had a marginal utility of 19 for pizza, the marginal utility of Pepsi would have to be 19 divided by 2. I don't see anything that looks like that. Similarly, if the marginal utility of pizza were 17, I would need a marginal utility of Pepsi that's 17 divided by 2. And again, I don't see that. So it seems like the only place that we can make this happen is at this combination that I've outlined here. So we can see, we can go through, and we can say, is this a point where the consumer is actually spending all of her income? And we can say, well, this person, this happens at quantity of Pepsi equaling 8, and the quantity of pizza equaling 5. So what we can notice is that given that the price of Pepsi is 1, and the price of pizza is two, her total spend was just equal to eight times one plus five times two, which is 18. And drum roll please, we said her income was 18, so we can actually see from this that she was in fact spending all of her money. So we can conclude then that this is her happiness or utility maximizing consumption bundle, that being eight Pepsis and five slices of pizza. There's actually one other related way that we could look at this. So what we could do instead, because we know that we're comparing 
the ratio of marginal utility to price for one of the items to the ratio of marginal utility to price for the other item, we could just go ahead and calculate that at various quantities and then work from there. So for example here, again if I can't calculate marginal utility, I can't calculate marginal utility divided by price. But if the price of pizza is 2, then we can find this ratio by just dividing all of our marginal utilities by 2, and we would get 10, 9.5, and 8.5. We could do the same thing over here, but we would notice that the price of Pepsi is just 1. So we would just be dividing through by 1. Again, can't calculate this ratio if we don't have a marginal utility, but then we just get you know, these same numbers because we're just dividing by 1. And then we could do the following. We could say, say we're at a point where we're currently consuming 4 slices of pizza and five Pepsis. So we're just at this beginning point here. And I were to ask you, what do you want next? Do you want a pizza or a slice of pizza, I suppose? Or do you want a Pepsi? And you would look at this and you could say, well, I'm here. So my choice of what to consume next is really a choice between something that gives me a marginal utility of 10 units per dollar so 10 extra happiness points per dollar spent, or 12 extra happiness points per dollar spent. And you're like, oh, well, that 12 sounds like a better bang for my buck. I want this 12. So I'm going to consume this guy here. So now we're at a point where we're still at four slices of pizza, but now we have six Pepsis. We apparently have me being terrible at circling, but anyway. So now we're at this situation, and we ask ourselves the same question again. Because if you were to go through, you would notice that you haven't spent all of your money yet. Then you could say, okay, now the trade-off is, would I rather have another slice of pizza for a bang for my buck of 10 additional units of happiness per dollar? Or would I rather have another Pepsi for a bang for my buck of 11 additional happiness units per dollar? Oh, well, 11 sounds better than 10, so I want this seventh Pepsi here. And I would notice that I'm now at a consumption bundle of four slices of pizza and seven Pepsis. And I could calculate and say, oh, I still haven't spent all of my money. Okay, so now, see, we can just keep a running total. How much money have we spent? If we're at four pizzas, we've spent eight bucks on pizza, seven bucks on Pepsi, we've spent 15 of our $18, we have $3 left. And then we could say here, okay, $3 left. Would we rather have this thing here that gives us 10 additional units of happiness per dollar? or this additional thing that gives us 10 units of happiness per dollar. Oh, well now I'm like the donkey that has the two equally spaced food piles. I don't really know what to do. But unlike the donkey who's just going to get confused and starve to death because he can't decide, I'll just pick one. And for the sake of argument, let's pick this pizza over here. Say I have the pizza. So I spent $2 on my pizza. I still have more money to spend. Now, reasonably speaking, I can only afford more Pepsi because I wasn't told that I could buy like half a slice of pizza, but just go with me here. Then if we were still trying to figure out how to optimize our consumption, given what we're currently consuming, my next choice is one where I can either, hypothetically at least, get nine and a half extra happiness points per dollar from pizza or 10 additional happiness points per dollar from Pepsi. Oh, once again, the Pepsi seems better, so I'm gonna wanna go here. And now if I check at this consumption bundle of eight Pepsis and five slices of pizza, I've in fact spent all of my $18. Because, you know, eight times one, 
just 8 plus 2 times 5, which is 10. 8 plus 10 equals 18. And I would notice I've spent all my money, and I've spent it optimally, just at each step going for the thing that gave me the most marginal utility per dollar. And I end up at the same point as the point where I was looking at this directly and trying to find where the marginal utility per dollar was equal. Because you'll notice here, I'm at a consumption bundle where my marginal utility per dollar on pizza was 10, and also my marginal utility per dollar on Pepsi was 10.